Wigan from uh, the University of Pittsburgh telling us about random forest-based similarity learning for single cell data. Hello everyone, uh, thank you so much to give me this <coughs> opportunity to present <coughs> our work for you. Our work is random forest-based similarity learning for single cell RNA sequencing data. Uh, generally, single cell uh, sequencing is uh, a pioneering uh, approach which allows researchers to deeply investigate uh, cellular structure underlying various tissues. Uh, single cell analysis can overcome intrinsic limitation of bulk RNA measurement where uh, gene expression level are averaged over thousands or millions of cells. Typically, there are three important steps in most of the single cell RNA sequencing data analysis, which are dimension reduction, visualization, and clustering. However, uh, most of this application implicitly or explicitly relies on the notion of cell-to-cell -cell similarity. So in this work, our goal is to improve learning of cell-to-cell -cell similarity. So to calculate cell-to-cell -cell similarity properly for uh, single-cell RNA sequencing data, we need to consider three important challenges. High dimensionality of data, zero inflation, and feature dependency. So uh, in this work, we present RAFSIL, or Random Forest-Based Similarity Learning, a new approach to calculate cell-cell -cell similarity for single-cell RNA sequencing data. The RAFSIL, consider the first two challenge and overcome the first two challenge by applying feature extraction using subspace principal component analysis. And RAFSIL takes into account the last one using similarity learning by random forest. And the last one is one of the most important factors that most of the similarity metric like Euclidean distance, Spearman, or uh, you know, other type of correlation don't consider this factor. So here is the <clears throat> general overview of uh, our method. Briefly, our method receive a, a single cell uh, expression data as an input, and the output would be a symmetric cell-to-cell -cell similarity or dissimilarity matrix. <clears throat> our proposed method has two major uh, steps, feature construction and random forest similarity learning. In the first step or feature construction, briefly we try to extract a couple of features from the input data. To do that, first of all, we applied, uh, we performed the gene clustering by combination of the PCA and the K-means clustering, and this step would automatically uh, divide our uh, gene expression data to multiple gene clusters, uh, which we call them subspace of the data. In the next step, Spearman correlation computation would be applied on each gene clusters, and that would uh, provide cell-to-cell -cell similarity metrics, which uh, is extracted from uh, each subspace of the data. And in the next step, again, principal component analysis would be applied on each similarity matrix, and we select the most inf informative principal component using uh, elbow method, and the final, uh, feature matrix can be constructed by juxtaposing the extracted features from each gene clusters. So the extracted uh, uh, feature matrix would be passed to the second phase, which is random forest similarity learning. So the, generally, the second phase includes two different steps. Drive a supervised setup from our problem and uh, using one of these two approach, RAFSIL1 or RAFSIL2. Why? Because actually, as you know, the random forest is a kind of supervised problem, but however, our problem is completely supervised, so how we can use the random forest? So uh, we answered to this question using the step one, and in, um, when we generated our random forest, then we calculate similarity from uh, the generated random forest. Uh, but uh, how the random forest, uh, how the RAFSIL1 uh, works. To drive a supervised setup using uh, RAFSIL1, which was previously proposed using 
uh, by uh, other researcher in other uh, uh, data sets. Um, this, is, uh, this is the process. First of all, we generated a secondary data from the, uh, from the original feature set by randomly shuffling each feature independently. So it means that when we have a feature set, so we uh, generated a secondary feature uh, or secondary data <clears throat> from the main uh, feature set. In the next step, now we label both data set with different labels. And uh, in the next step, we train a random forest to separate the original feature set or ex extracted feature set from the shuffle data or synthetic data set. So by uh, applying this technique, we are trying to exploit uh, the, feature, the possible feature dependency in the uh, feature matrix F to distinguish that um, uh, data set or feature from the shuffle data set. But in this work, we propose our own method that we call it RAFSIL2. RAFSIL2 doesn't need to work with any uh, secondary or any synthetic data set or any shuffle data set. So the idea is something like this. First of all, um, uh, after selecting a single feature, we quantize its value using partition around meteorite clustering. When uh, the silhouette metric is used to automatically estimate the number of quantization part. And after that, using this approach, you are able to drive the cell labels. In the next phase, we replace the corresponding features with the extracted uh, cell labels. And in the next phase, we are able to run random forest. We are able to train random forest to predict uh, the, the extracted cell labels using the reduced feature set. So we repeat this work for all the features, which means that if we have m different features, now we are able to generate m different random forests. So when uh, we drive and when we extracted our random forest, now how we can calculate the similarity from the generated random forest? I'm going to explain it using a simple example. Assume that we have a, a, a random forest including for different decision trees. And after the training of this set of decision trees, assume that we are going to um, calculate the similarity between two single cells C1 and C2. Briefly, the similarity between C1 and C2 can be calculated as the number of the terminal nodes, which uh, including uh, both C1 and C2, divided by the total number of decision tree that we use to generate that random forest. So it, in, in this example, uh, in this ex example, the similarity between C1 and C2 is 2 divided by 4. And in the case of RAFSIL2, when we have multiple, and, and uh, sorry, using this technique, so simply we are able to calculate any pair of uh, uh, similarity between all the cells. And in the case of RAFSIL2, when we have multiple decision tree, the final uh, distance similarity metrics would be uh, average all over the generated uh, metrics which uh, we got from each random forest. So we evaluate the performance of RAFSIL on 10 different data sets in three different applications. Similarity learning, dimension reduction, and clustering. And in this, in this presentation, we show the average performance across data sets only for simplicity. But in the paper, uh, we report all the uh, detailed uh, results for all the uh, data sets. So in the first case, or similarity learning, briefly, uh, we learned the similarity metrics from uh, uh, RAFSIL. And after that, we evaluate the performance of similarity learning using nearest neighbor's error which nearest neighbor's error can be defined as the fraction of misclassified cells when a simple KNN classifier is used using the true cell labels. So this plot indicates the extracted result when the y-axis indicates the NNE, the lower is better, and in x-axis we compare the performance of both RAFSIL1 and RAFSIL2 with domain-specific uh, method 
which is similar, and some of the generic method like Pearson correlation, Spearman, and Euclidean, when uh, different type of gene filtering approach uh, were used. For example, like highly expressed gene or highly frequent gene. So by uh, looking at this uh, plot, we can see that the raf cell accurately learn cell-to-cell -cell similarity. In the second application or dimension reduction, first we learn the similarity uh, matrix by RAFSIL, and after that, three different dimension reduction methods, TSNE, PCA, and probabilistic PCA, were applied on the learned similarity uh, matrix, and uh, using this method, we reduce the dimension to two dimension. And in the two dimension, again, we use nearest neighbor's error to evaluate the performance of the method. So again, we compare uh, our uh, the performance of RAF seal with different type of similarity metric, like uh, similar Euclidean, Spearman, and Pearson correlation. Here you can see that, uh, again, the vertical show the NNE metric, the lower is better, and the horizontal indicates different type of uh, dimension reduction method. And we found that the RAF seal based similarity performs well for dimension reduction, also, we found that the dimension reduction typically improve similarity because it can remove the effect of noise on the data. So in the last application or a clustering, we are able to use uh, the RAF seal not only for dimension reduction and similarity learning, but also as a clustering technique. To do that, the extracted similarity metrics would be passed to K-means clustering or hierarchical clustering as an input to one of these two algorithms. And this combination can be used as a hybrid clustering method uh, to cluster single cell. And to evaluate the performance of this method, we use adjusted RAND index. <clears throat> and again, we report the result in this bar plot. When the uh, y-axis indicates ARI, and the higher is better for ARI. And the X uh, axis uh, denotes different type of um, a clustering technique. We compare the performance of RAFSIL as a clustering method with some domain specific uh, techni clustering technique like similar SCT PC reduce and some generic method like K means and hierarchical clustering. And we found that generally domain specific method uh, works better than generic approach. And Generally, we found that the combination of RAFSIL2 and hierarchical clustering work better in comparison with the uh, current method. In another uh, uh, analysis, we evaluate the robustness of clustering solution. To do that, we randomly excluded 10% of the data of the cells from each data set, and we repeatedly uh, clusters the cells. And uh, finally, we calculated <clears throat> the box plots over all the calculated ARI for each data set. For example, here in this, uh, this figure reports the, all the extracted results. Each panel denotes one data set, and each color indicates uh, one clustering solution or one clustering technique. And uh, the last panel show us the average, show us the average uh, result over all the data sets and for all the methods. So uh, from this plot, we can see that the all methods show substantial variation in ARI. How, however, the SC3 and RAFSIL uh, could get the robust clustering solution in comparison with the other method. So during our experiment, we found that when we use RAFSIL2 as an input for TSNE, for visualization, this combination can be used as a very powerful method to discover unwanted uh, variation, technical variation in the data. For example, we applied the combination of RAFSIL2 and TSNE for visualization of a data set of mouse embryonic stem cells when biological labels in these data sets show a different uh, culturing condition of cells. So by looking at this plot, you can see that it seems that there are some uh, substructure or some weird group 
uh, related to each cluster. For example, if you look at the red cluster, we are able to see that there are four different clusters in this, uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, in red clusters. So to investigate more what's going on, again, we color code the same plots using technical annotation. And in this data set, technical annotation denotes to different sequencing chip. So by comparing these two plots, we found that uh, the substructure underlying the red clusters perfectly corresponds to technical annotation and not a kind of new clusters. So <clears throat> generally, actually here I only show you um, the performance of combination of RAFSIL2 and TSNE only on one data set. However, um, our experiment, uh, we run this uh, combination uh, method on five <coughs> benchmark, five different data sets. And in all of the data set, we were able to find uh, this kind of uh, technical variation in the data. So as a conclusion, in this presentation, uh, I present our work, RAFSIL, which is a, uh, a two-step uh, uh, similarity learning using feature extraction and random forest. I show that the RAFSIL works well compared with current method. And in the future, we are going to improve the capability of RAFSIL to handle larger data set. Thank you so much. Thank you. Questions, please. Ah, sorry, I'm blind. You, okay, you go. You're at the microphone. Yeah. So, uh, so what you call uh, technical labels are batch effects, basically, right? Mm -hmm. And I guess in this uh, kind of data, it's very important to deal with them right in the beginning. Are you doing that in your method, or? No, in my method, no. But uh, as I mentioned to you, we run this technique on five more data set, and in all of them, the researcher are already applied some kind of, uh, you know, removing uh, batch effect uh, algorithm. But using this approach, we found that it seems that their approach was not very useful to remove, you know, the batch effect. However, in RAFSIL, no. Uh, we don't apply any method to remove the batch effect. Just we can't use the combination of RAFSIL and TSNE to visualize the batch effect. It means that assume that you have a data set, you apply the technique to remove the batch effect, so you can't use this combination to visually, uh, you know, inspect, uh, and investigate. Your approach was uh, useful or no. But I guess as a future direction, you should deal with this batch effect in your method as well. Uh, also, there is, I think, methods would deal with uh, single cell RNA seq, and which actually um, do all this visualization and dimensionality right. reduction, but also do the batch effect remo removal as a first step. So yes, some of them yes, but for example, some of them no. For example, uh, there are a couple of clustering techniques like SC3 is one of the most powerful clustering technique in this field, or similar. None of them apply any batch effect, and they mentioned that if you are gonna cluster your data, first of all, you need to remove the batch effect. But yeah, this is a good idea, so we can think yeah, about you, it. Yeah, you might also uh, check out a, 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 a paper, in, uh, very related, I think, to your work. It's called Saucy, where they do that, so you might want to check that out. Which one? Saucy is called, I mean, that's the name of the tool. SC3 or? Saucy, S-A-U-C-E-I. -S oh, okay. You, guys you might want offline. to check that out, yes. So there's one more question over there. Hi, thanks for your talk. Um, I was wondering, is that batch effect not visible if you just applied TSNE to the original input data? Yeah, some of them. Sometimes, for example, uh, we actually we have seen some data set that if you only apply the TSNE on your data, okay, and if you look at the result using Euclidean distance, you cannot see anything. However, if you calculate your similarity or dissimilarity metrics using RAFSIL and after that fit that dissimilarity metrics to the TSNE for visualization, now you can see that. You can see that batch effect. Great, thanks a lot. You're welcome. 
I would like to thank all speakers of this session, and if you're a speaker...